for you to basically chastise me about uh, what Trump has done for the black community, and especially coming from Joy Behar, I thought, I thought, you know, you're number one, not in Baltimore. You don't live in one of these dangerous cities and you're not black. And so I just thought, you know, how could you basically tell me how I should be feeling in this situation? Um, I'm on the ground every single day. My team is out there seven days a week knocking doors. Uh, we register voters five days a week. And so I wanted to talk about all the great grassroots things we were doing uh, as Republicans. You know, and I talked about this in my RNC convention speech. Republicans usually write off the inner cities. And so I wanted to talk about the fact that we're actually providing an option for inner city communities. And it just kind of went left. All right, everybody, this is a Rubin Report on the fly today. Joining me is Kim Klasik. She's a Republican candidate for Congress in Maryland's 7th District, which covers Baltimore. Kim had quite a morning, and I reached out to her, and she immediately responded. So here we are. Kim, how you doing? <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm doing, doing well so far. I'm doing pretty well, but you have had one of those mornings because you went viral and I've wanted to have you on the show, but you were on The View this morning and we're gonna show the clip in just a second, but before we get to the clip that everybody's talking about, did you kind of have a sense that it might go in this direction? I just wanna get your sense of like where your head was at before and then we'll show the clip. Yeah, so um, The View, actually the booker called me uh, yesterday to basically give me a rundown and talk to me about the questions that uh, the ladies were gonna ask me. Um, so she gave me about 20 questions. She said, we'll get to five of them, but you know, just so you have them, uh, you'll know exactly where we're going. Um, so, you know, I honestly, from the questions that she gave me, I thought it was gonna be kind of an even keel conversation. Um, I thought they wanted to know a little bit about, you know, what I wanna do in Baltimore, the policies that I'll put forth. Um, so I didn't see uh, it coming to, you know, what about Trump? What about Trump? Uh, but when it did, I just thought, you know what? I'm here to talk about what I want to bring to the table in District 7. So, uh, you know, I, I just said, OK, you know, I've had enough of this. I'm just going to keep going and and just, you know, be honest and, and be myself at this point. Yeah. OK, so before we show the clip, I should just add that before this happened in the clip, you had a really nice exchange with Meghan McCain. Totally respectful. Yeah. You got to talk about your ideas. And then uh, Joy Behar chimed in, so we'll throw to the clip. Come on, Kim. Excuse me, I have to say something to you. He told Bob Woodward that it was a very serious issue, and it's airborne, and that it was terrible. And then he went out and told the American people, don't wear masks, it's all going to go away. You have to put some blame on your president, I'm sorry. You're putting it on something extraneous here. Talk to the point, please. Is this, is this Joy speaking? The same Joy? The same yes. Joy that yes. paraded around in blackface not too long ago? Come on, Joy, I don't think you should be That's asking not these true. questions. I am Excuse me. Excuse me. The black community had my back. They know that the that was not black has my back. That was an homage. Oh, please, the just answer the question. The black well. community has your back? The black yes. community has yes, your back? they do. Sonny, the yes. black community well, did Sonny not tell vote them. for you. Well, the black you community know did not vote for you. What it planet was during are you a special election. On? Sonny, can I speak? What planet it was during, are you living on? It was during a special wow. election wow. while we were still under lockdown and wow. I cannot wow. talk to people. Can I speak or are you just going to scream over this me? becomes a big... Listen, Kim, good luck to you. Thanks to Kim Clay. That was very immature, but thank you for having me. Come Okay, so that is the clip that is going around the world right now. Were you ready with that? Like, were you ready just to be like, if they go that route, I'm gonna have to pull out the blackface thing? No, I honestly, I wanted to just really strictly stick to the policies. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about my opponent. You know, I did lose in the special election. Uh, my opponent has been sworn in since May 5th. And I wanted to basically highlight the fact that he hasn't done anything since being in the seat. Um, so when they kept going on the Trump situation, I thought, you know what, for you to basically chastise me about uh, what Trump has done for the black community, and especially coming from Joy Behar, I thought, I thought, you know, you're number one, not in Baltimore. You don't live in one of these dangerous cities and you're not black. 
And so I just thought, you know, how could you basically tell me how I should be feeling in this situation? Um, I'm on the ground every single day. My team is out there seven days a week knocking doors. Uh, we register voters five days a week. And so I wanted to talk about all the great grassroots things we were doing uh, as Republicans. You know, and I talked about this in my RNC convention speech. Republicans usually write off the inner cities. And so I wanted to talk about the fact that we're actually providing an option for inner city communities. And it just kind of went left. <laughs> it went left, no no pun intended. Um, what, what do you make of the line that Joy said, which is, I have the support of the black community, and that it was two things. It was, I have the support of the black community, and that her black face was an homage. Somehow, because she's a lefty, when she does black face, it's an homage, but of course we know if someone on the right did blackface to be silly or Halloween or whatever it might be, we know this is not gonna be taken as an homage. What do, you, what do you make of those two things? Yeah, I don't know how she could even reconcile with those. You know, We saw Megan from Fox News, remember she had her own daily talk show, and she was just Megan talking. Kelly, yeah. Yeah, she was just talking about the fact that she didn't realize play, you know, paying an homage for blackface uh, was disrespectful. Remember, she was talking about how kids grew up, you know, doing the Michael Jackson and and that was yeah. their costume for Halloween. So she was actually reprimanded just for talking about it. And so here's an individual that actually did it. And then she says to me, you know, the black community has her back uh, because, you know, I guess she's Joy Behar. I, I don't know. I don't know her very well. Um, but what I will say is, you know, it didn't make any sense to me. It was very unfair. And this is kind of what we see in the media today. You've got Megyn Kelly, who basically gets chastised and, and people are trying to cancel her uh, for talking about or even asking the question. And then you've got Joey Behar, on the other hand, who actually did it, but she should be you know, able to do so because I guess she's on the left. And so this is what I think we see a lot, media bias, um, but you know, I'm, I'm not standing for it. What about that phrase, the black community? Because there's something about that phrase, if you say the black community, the gay community, whatever it is, it's as, as if these people all think the same thing. And she has the gall to say it to you. You happen to be black, nobody cares. But if you're saying the black community supports me, well, well, I don't think Kim does. Yeah, absolutely. I've been black for 38 years. You know, I come yeah. from a black family. <laughs> you know, I, it's like, I can't believe that people say these kind of things. And I think this is something that even Candace Owens has touched on before. You know, you can't be a, a white liberal or anybody, you know, of a different color and tell us about our community. I can't tell a Jewish person how they should feel, you know, with the anti-Semitism that we see across the country. You know, so we have to make sure we allow those people to still have a voice. Uh, at the same time, I'm not the kind of person to put everybody in a box. I think that's divisive. Uh, but again, I was ready to talk about the policies. I was ready to talk about career opportunities that I want to bring to Baltimore. Um, and I thought, you know what, this is a great time to talk to the other side of the aisle. Uh, I never get invited to CNN or MSNBC or, you know, left wing media. Uh, they don't even want me on there. So I thought this is a great chance to just reach that audience and talk about what I want to bring to the community uh, as a member of Congress. And it kind of just went a completely different way. Uh, I'm sorry that it ended up that way. But at the same time, I'm not sorry for defending myself. Yeah, well, I don't think you have anything to be sorry for because you you were a total pro. But you know, because we talk about these things in the in the context of identity politics that they're kind of throwing on us, mm -hmm. like the the female element of this. Like, if you were to ask the ladies of the View, I'm sure all of them would say we're we're for all women. We're we're for all women. And yet, the way Sunny framed her first question to you was was deeply dismissive. We just watched yeah. what what Joy did to you. What, what do you make about that sort of thing, the way Republican or just right-leaning women or just non-progressive women are, are treated by these women? Yeah, so there's a trend right now. It's called uh, hashtag win with black women, right? And they're talking about the fact that they were so excited that Kamala Harris was picked as Joe Biden's uh, VP, right? That was the whole thing. But it's only win with black women if you are a Democrat, if you think like them. You know, if you're a black woman running as a Republican, that it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're running, you're a coon, you're Uncle Tom, you're all these things. And so for me, you know, when you're in the black community and you've been voting for Democrats for over 50 years, um, they do take our vote for granted. And that's what I was kind of showing in Baltimore. You know, for us to move the needle, we have to have allies on both sides of the aisle. So I don't understand why we do this. We chastise each other uh, because we want to run in a different party. I noticed in the white community, you can run as a Democrat or Republican, they don't actually, you know, ch chastise you for it. Uh, but in the black community, we have something totally different going on. 
So it's, it's to me, you know, they just want you to think the same. I guess they always want you to do it. But I look at those women in the view and I know they are both are all of them are millionaires. You know, they live in a different basically society than the people do in West Baltimore. I know Sunny said she's from Baltimore. I wanted to ask her when's the last time she's been to West Baltimore um, because it is. It's We got 17,000 vacant homes. We have a poor education system um, and we have crime and violence. And so for me, it's like I don't think they understand because they're not on the ground. They don't feel it like we do here. And so that was my point. And, and I hope uh, that point got across. Yeah, so I wanna do a bigger interview with you before the election so people can really talk about your ideas, but we just wanted to do this quick in, in light of the view thing. But just let's just do a couple things because I think you made some really interesting points also in the interview despite everything. Uh, is it 52 years, 53 years of democratic rule in Baltimore? Yeah, 53 years, yep, we've been under 50, Democrat. 53. Do, do you sense, when you say that to people, like the average person in Baltimore, when you tell them that, when they say, okay, we got all these problems, we got crime, we got drugs, we got homelessness, blah, blah, blah. When you say to them, okay, I hear you, I agree, we got 53 years of democratic rule. Does that, do you think that actually is starting to get through to people? Because we see this in all of the big cities that have the problems, they seem to all be run by Democrats for decades. It's just a fact. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our polling is going to come back next week, I think on Tuesday, but we have a lot of people that have been saying, you know what, I'm voting for Kim Klasik. They get it. They understand, you know, voting for the same party, having your vote taken for granted. You know, this is a situation I posted last year of videos of the fact that there are certain neighborhoods where they can't even get the trash picked up. I mean, this is a real serious situation. This is 2020. It's America and people shouldn't be living like this. So I don't know why the women on The View would actually you know, be mad at me for trying to make a black community better and give them a better quality of life. Uh, but that's where we are today. And that's just how divisive things are and, and how polarizing it is uh, in certain parts of the media. Yeah. So you gave a pretty spectacular speech, I think, at the RNC. And can you just talk a little bit? You know, I think still it, it, it's sort of like the stereotype related to 53 years of Democratic rule. People can't understand that maybe you want to change that. Can you talk a little bit about what you've seen in the last year or two going on with the Republican Party? Because it does seem to me that it's getting a lot wider. We're now, I just saw a poll, something like 45% of gay men are going are gonna to vote Republican. Like these are crazy numbers. And we're seeing similar things with, with the black community, something like 30% now. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. So I think there's going to be a lot of people, especially in the black community, voting for President Trump. You have to think, first and foremost, a lot of people don't even want to admit it because, you know, the cancel culture and the backlash from it. Um, but people understand. I mean, when you have President Trump tweeting out, look, District 7, if you vote for Kimberly Klasik, she wants to bring career opportunities. She wants to bring businesses. People understand. That's basically him saying, if she's elected and I'm reelected, we are going to make Baltimore great again. You know, we were once a manufacturing powerhouse here, and we allowed all those jobs to go overseas during the Clinton administration. And I think Trump, you know, he's all about the economy, and he wants to bring a lot of those jobs back. I want to bring that biotech industry here to Baltimore, and we can do that. Um, but at the same time, it's like, look, if you're not here on the ground and you don't understand firsthand what people are going through, um, then I, I really don't understand how you can comment on it. You know, I know Sunny said she grew up in Baltimore. I have not seen her in West Baltimore a day in my life. And I've been in this area for 10 years now. But at the same time, it's like, look, why don't we come up with solutions? Why are we going back and forth basically saying who's black enough or who's not black enough? That's just a distraction. We got to make some real results come to the area. OK, so speaking of Baltimore, there, there was another moment in the clip today where when Sonny asks her first question, you know, she doesn't really say hello. She basically kind of throws you under the bus. Oh, you're not living in Baltimore right now. She's from Baltimore. Uh, and you had a great response to her, I thought. Uh, could, could you just kind of repeat uh, well, what, what you've done in Baltimore and, and why you care about Baltimore? Yeah, so for the past eight years, I've been working with my nonprofits, Workforce Development. Um, we haven't gotten any grants, received any money. You know, it's kind of something that we did on our own, but we helped over 200 women become gainfully employed. 30% went on to be financially independent. And so for me, that's what I'm trying to do as a member of Congress is bring those career opportunities, uh, focus more on job training, putting apprenticeship programs through the high schools. Like this is all stuff that I wanted to talk about on The View, um, but I wasn't given that opportunity. But, you know, that's what it's about, getting people back to work, you know, getting some of that crime and violence down because there are opportunities. And so for me, I feel like, you know, Sonny, if she's from Baltimore and she sees how bad we're suffering here, why hasn't she tried to come home and do anything? 
I haven't heard anything that she's tried to do on the ground here. If this is really truly her home, you know, there's a lot of people suffering here. So I don't know. I don't I don't even know why she threw that in there, but she did. Yeah. What do you make of just the the idea that the people who are screaming the most about racism these days, the people who are screaming the most about sexism, homophobia, the rest of the buzzwords, that in many cases, they're the ones who are pushing it more than anyone else? Absolutely. I mean, we see that a lot with the whole defund the police narrative, right? We live in a city where most of the crime is perpetrated against black people. Gallup did a poll. 81% of black Americans do not want to defund the police. The only people talking about it are people that live in gated communities or they're running around with security themselves. You know, there's not there's not the people living in these dangerous community that is saying defund the police. And it doesn't make any sense. If you want police to be better trained, you want police reform, you need more funding. So it makes absolutely no sense at all. And nobody on the ground is saying that. But, yeah, that's what we see. We see the people that are living the elite life. Uh, basically saying this is what people living in low income neighborhoods want. And that's just not true. They never take the, the cameras into these neighborhoods and talk to people on the ground. They just act as if they know what they want. Yeah, you probably saw, you know, Nancy Pelosi has been kind of pushing along the riots or not saying anything about them. And then like, what, two days ago, someone literally pooped on her driveway and then suddenly she spoke out against the riots, so it, it kind of came home for her. Okay, I know your, your phone is melting, and, do, and I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, where can people go if they want to find out more about you? And, and give one pitch to the people that don't know you that are just finding out about you. Yes, yeah, so you can definitely go to KimKForCongress.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at KimKBaltimore. And I'm honestly a non-politician just trying to run to fix the problems that we have my first and foremost thing is to bring more career opportunities to the Baltimore area and just back to America in general, right? We see a lot of the cities across the, the country right now that are hurting are cities that once relied on manufacturing. We need to bring those jobs back home. So that's my big thing. Kim, I thank you for doing this. You did a beautiful thing today. The, the machine was coming for you and you punched back and that's why you're gonna get all the accolades you enjoy. It. You, uh, you deserve it and, and have a good weekend. Thank you, you too. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you wanna watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.